Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadreando Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy. And today we have an amazing guest. His name is Guy, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. Who are you? So, hello, everyone. My name is Guy Zaya Smith, a.k.a. The Black Puzzle. I'm a self-advocate for autism. I'm also a performing artist with autism. I'm a singer. I'm a dancer. I'm an actor. I'm a voiceover actor. I'm a cartoonist and I'm a musician, but also a public speaker as well. And what I do to raise awareness for autism is by performing and telling my stories to a lot of people. I've been sharing my stories to many times, to many places, to many people, to a whole lot of people. And I've been an advocate for almost eight years and it has been a long journey and it has been yet a big, yet fulfilling, and yet a refreshing journey as well. And it has also been a challenging journey. And it was a journey that I never thought I would be and a calling that I never thought I would have. So I felt like I joined, I was part of a big community to help that as well. And being a part of community is pretty tight and pretty cool too. So it's pretty dope and it's a great honor and a blessing to be a part of that. Amazing. Thank you for that, guy. So um, I, I'm going to introduce a topic. So today's topic is achievement despite a diagnosis. And the reason why the topic came up is that as parents of neurodiverse children, we often wonder what our kids' futures are going to be like. And I want to highlight, you know, exceptional, outstanding people that have autism you know, so that parents can see what it can be like in the future. So um, I want to share so that you can continue to inspire more people and tell your story. So um, you have a diagnosis of autism. I want to ask you uh, if we can go back in time a little bit. When was it that your parents noticed that you were quote unquote different? So going back in time, right? So they noticed I was doing things a little differently. I acted a little differently. I couldn't really get eye contact, understand people's questions. I would talk to myself out loud, like think my thoughts out loud, like nonstop. And I would not know how to interact with other kids or interact with other people too. So they knew I was showing signs of autism when I was like five, but they said I was showing signs of autism, but when I got to 10 years old, so things were hard for me when I, when I was like 10 years old, when I was growing up, like things, I got a little scared about things, got kind of troubled by emotions and learned about different stuff and understanding people. And I was 10, I was diagnosed with a high functioning form of autism. And it used to be called Asperger's syndrome, but we just call it at autism now because they want to keep it equal. And it was a challenging life. It was a scary, yet little hard, devastating kind of thing. But I didn't want autism to let take the best of me. But back then, I did let it take the best of me. But as I got older and older, I didn't want to let it take the best of me anymore. And it was like the hardest thing because... Back then, I used to worry about how people would make me feel. And it was like, just based on my experience with the bullying and the rejection and being seen like, being treated like I was invisible. And I was not happy about that. I was really unhappy about that. And I had to do something that needs to be done. Because I was afraid they'll do something really bad. And those fears mm -hmm. did happen. Because oh, wow. I thought I would get better. But it really didn't. And it's messed up as it sounds. Because here's the thing. Back then, I, there were times I wish I wasn't. Because I was trying so hard to be like everyone else back then. So he was be more nicer to me and people stop being mean to me and everything like that. And it was like, man, why me? I told myself, why me? I didn't ask to be this way. 
I didn't mm-hmm. choose it. It chose me. I thought not having it would make have me feel happier, have a better life. But it wasn't, I can't get rid of it. It would go away. So, like, example, you know, like the X Men, right? X Men, yeah. they look human, they act human, and they are human, except they all have different abilities. I'm like that. I'm, a, I'm just like that. And people often are just like that, too. Yeah. Because it's just exactly like X Men. So it takes. T- I've actually said that before on the show. Yes. I love that. So, so you got diagnosed when you were ten or or, or five years old. I'm sorry. Uh, ten actually, officially ten. ten. Okay. Yeah. So then, um, so when they noticed that you were different, what did they do? Did they say, send you in to get tested, or did they talk to your pediatrician? Do you do you know what they did once they noticed? They sent me to like special things and doctors and everything, and they sent me to like uh, therapy and everything as well. And see a psychiatrist and everything. And that's what they know is that. So IEP meetings and things like all things like testing wise. And it was really not easy. Mm-hmm. How, how did that, once you found out that like, once you got the diagnosis of autism, how did that make you feel? Do you remember? How that made you feel? I remember. Did it kind of like give you a sense of relief or did like did it make you feel another way? It made me feel another way. I'll be honest. I was scared. Mm-hmm. I was unhappy. And I was very sad that I had something that no one else had. I thought I was the only one. But I wasn't. And I felt like I wasn't human. And it was a thing I want thought that I had to keep a secret. And the reason why I couldn't tell a lot of people because they wouldn't understand. Because mm. I thought telling people would make things better. But sometimes it wouldn't. But it wouldn't change people's hearts. Some people would change, some people wouldn't would not. Mm-hmm. And that's what got messed up. Because I felt they used to think that everyone was mean. I used to think people who didn't have autism were all mean. Mm. And that's how I saw it. Because based on my experience, what yeah, they what did, all the things they said, how they made me felt, I felt like I could be around anybody. Mm. And when I was at a special school to help people just like me, help me get out of it, help me get more interact with my peers. It helped a little bit. Most of everything, but then help me with like interact with peers more. Okay, Isaiah, I wanted to ask you. So, how old are you now? I'm 26. You're 26. And where did you grow up? You grew up down south or uh, up up north? Oh, uh, like the Virginia area. So down south. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can I can imagine it must have been tough. Um. So. Okay, once you had the diagnosis with your family, did you feel like you were supported or that they understood? Because I know as as people of color, sometimes it's hard understanding when someone is different than than everybody else in the family. So how was the support from your family once you got the diagnosis towards your parents and towards you as well? I felt like they were very supportive. They didn't judge me or anything, but they want me to help me interact with other people and to not worry about what other people think and still be me and don't worry about the jerk heads don't worry about the mean people just be you and when they tell both sides of my family they accept me for who I am they both do my mom's side of family my dad's side of family too I love that do you have other family members that are autistic or is it just you for now that you know uh, just me Okay. All right. So tell me, okay. So was the situation when you were getting bullied and treated badly, is that what made you go into self-advocacy to help other people? Uh, yes, it was because people made me felt the way they kept saying mean stuff to me. They were saying they were talking, I was bullied for crying because they thought it was funny to them. So mm. I was bullied for crying. 
bullied for my emotions, my fears. I was bullied for that. I'm sorry you went through that. Yeah. But how were the how were how was the support in the school though? Because like I know kids can be. I'm a teacher. I'm a special education teacher. I know kids can be super super mean. But your teachers in the school were they supportive of supportive of you? Did they defend you? How did you feel supported in the school that you were at? So the school they have supported me a lot. That special school they understood everything, but they taught me a lot. They taught me how to control my fears and get over those. Silly fears help me get over my uncomfortable things. They help me get over my emotions. They help me towards that, mm-hmm. and help me control the those emotions too. Help me control those p- negative things. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the posts that you made on your account really touched me. Um, where you were talking about how you were suffering from depression and anxiety last year and that you have been able to help yourself and work through it Uh, how did you like what made you notice that you were not feeling a hundred percent like that you were feeling like yourself well it was some like a high school they were having a little chat i knew they were saying some stuff that i didn't like to see about me saying like i didn't get along people weren't probably scared of him or the other person i went to high school with and mm-hmm. it hit me. And I was looking back to, I mean, high school was okay. I mean, I did go to homecoming court. I was in homecoming court. I did all the things I wanted to do and being you know, a theater, got honor rolls and graduated from high school when honors graduate. But still, I felt like people weren't being very nice. And. Mm-hmm. Back when I was out of that special school, it started all in middle school. And my origin story starts there. People weren't very nice to me because I didn't want to do anything with anybody because I was afraid to show off. And I afraid it eventually happened. And I was afraid they'll do so many more mean stuff. And I felt like that was a mistake I made. Mm-hmm. But I felt like it was a time of day that would help me get out. But the biggest mistake I made was t- telling them I had autism back then. Oh. But I didn't know if they would be nicer than me or not. And some people knew I had it, but they just continued to be mean to me about it. So wait, you didn't tell them that you were autistic back then? And I thought it made it worse if, I, if they didn't stop. They thought it was a joke to them. Mm. And it was not a joke. It's a serious thing. It's something that something that I should be punished for or be ashamed of and not to be treated badly for. I agree. So as a guy, I wanted to ask you, so how was it that you got into the arts? Like, was it that you guys had programs in the school that you were at or your parents noticed that you had an affinity for like more artistic things and they put you into these programs? How how did that go about? Like at least for music, as far as music is concerned, how did you get into music? So I was inspired by a show from a cartoon network called Class of Three Thousand, and it inspired me to be do more music and see others like Michael Jackson, Justin Timberlake, Beyonce, and all other celebrities like Ashanti inspired me to do music and. Also, like movie wise, like I was inspired by Jamie Foxx and Alicia Keys, and also a lot of actors like Jim Carrey and Eddie Murphy, and so on. I have those people inspire me to do more acting too. Okay, and so when you're on the stage, does it make you feel more free? Like. Cause I, I like I know I have interviewed a, bu- a bunch of people that are neurodiverse on the show that are autistic and they enjoy acting because it's like the one time that they can get out of their own head and that they can be somebody else and it it comes really easy to them to kind of just embody that persona that 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 character. Yeah, it. How do you feel? It makes me feel good. It, feels, it gave me an energy like a super cool super energy that came out. And 
back when I was eighth grade, I did a talent show. Uh, we had a talent show in eighth grade, and I was performing uh, Michael Jackson. I felt confident. Which song did you sing? Oh, uh, no, I didn't sing. I was dancing. Okay. I was dancing. You were doing the moonwalk? Yep, doing the moonwalk, dancing the PYT. I had to do the moonwalk Love and the stand on my tiptoes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, um, what kind of music do you sing now? Like, uh, are is there like a particular genre that you're into, like R and B or rap or hip hop? Like, what what kind of music do you sing now? I, I like to sing R and B, a little bit of pop and the gospel too. So, those are things I like to sing. Okay. And you like to go to church? Do you go to church with your parents or by yourself? Like a bit of both. So when I was at college, I would like go to church by myself, and when I'm at here, I would go to church with my parents most of the time. And I'm uh, also a Christian, so I like go to church, and it helped me out because it helped me get more connected with God and God. Why God gave me the African thing for a reason gave me autism for a reason because he wants me to share my story, my experience to help other people just like me. And that's where I started my other stuff, where I, how I became an advocate. So I was at a Baptist church. So they asked me the guest speaker. I was nervous, but people were being accepting of me. Because I never done a speech like that before in front of other okay. people. So I had to take some breaths. So I kept going. Okay. And I told my story, and people were cheering me on. People were clapping for me and made me feel like I was a somebody. And my parents were happy. My mom was crying tears of joy. My dad was very proud of me. And it felt great. It felt great. Because what they did was, because what I learned, I know why I had autism for a reason. To be that voice to be that inspiration, to be that advocate. But that was just the beginning. I continued to be an advocate during my college days. And I was at a, a community college at first, and I learned how to be an advocate, better advocate. And next year, when I transferred to a four-year college, so that's where I became a big, big advocate for autism. So I wanted to put together an Autism Awareness Month program to help raise awareness for autism. And by doing that, I shared my story to 400 people that came to my program. 400 people cheering, crying, laughing, and sharing. It was a great experience. And I didn't expect that many people. I did. And sit at the same time, but that was a big support I have. I had real big support I had, and that was like the best turnout I ever had. The best turnout, and it was a strange yet but refreshing but fulfilling thing that I ever experienced. And after that, I found my calling. I kept doing the same thing. I continued to raise for autism. I got to do things I wanted to do. I got more confident in singing and dancing. Still did some acting and did more things and won a pageant and did finish my major and my minor. I finished college and got my bachelor's degree. What was your major in college? Oh, uh, graphic design. And my minor nice. was theater. Okay, good. I can kind of see that you're like artistic in the sense that you like, like I, even your shirt is like very like people. Okay, so for the people that are not seeing the YouTube video, um, guy has this beautiful kind of like abstract art kind of shirt on. It's very colorful. It's very nice. So I can see that. Like I can see the graphic design. Um, like how your affinity for graphic design. I love that. Um, so. What makes you feel like what are what are some of your favorite things to do? Like besides singing and dancing, like what gives you like like joy in your heart? I like uh talking to friends and hang out with family and driving my car and working out 
and they eat my one of my favorite places. I like I love Italian food, so Italian food is my favorite. Yeah. What well, What's your favorite thing to eat in their Italian restaurant? I uh, like like little noodles, little spaghetti, some little garlic okay. knots and pizza. Okay, that sounds good. And some chicken parmesan. Oh, oh yes. Nice. So wait, guy, do you date right now? Are you dating or, or you haven't started dating yet? Not yet, but I am planning to date again. I have dated a few times and it's time for me to start dating again and uh, try to uh, be in, been in a relationship with a beautiful lady and who will, will accept me for who I am and I'll accept her for who she is if she'll see me for who I am. And that uh, also brings my point. So it can't be hard for people with autism to be in relationships. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And mm -hmm. I think it's because like it's hard for people to understand that. And yeah. it's just time to hard to know how to interact with us. But it's time we just gotta push through that. And don't see us as the label. See it as people. And and I think like I feel like being in a relationship will make me feel better. Because mm -hmm. it'll make me feel like me. And it'll help me get more positive again. And, and I think it will help a lot. Because, like, from the movie Shrek, I felt the kind of same thing he felt. Like, he felt like he was outcast. Like, because he was an ogre. And people were scared of him. And people were judge him before he gets to know him. And when he said the line, people take welcome, look at me and go, Ah, hell, run, a big, stupid, ugly ogre. They judge you for getting to know me. And that's why he was better off being alone. Mm -hmm. But he had a friend, Donkey. He said, when I met him, he wasn't big stupid ugly ogre because he wanted to be his friend. Because mm -hmm. he saw him, because he cared about him. He didn't see him as a label. He saw it for him. Mm -hmm. And when he got to meet Fiona, she saw him for him. And Shrek told how she felt, how he felt about her. And Fiona... Well, it's not the same thing, too, because she was part ogre, and she was caused by a spell, and she was afraid that people would see her scared, but Shrek didn't. And mm -hmm. let him know that he's that sh she is beautiful for who she is. And over the years, they had some hard complications and being accepted. And Shrek, in his final movie, because he felt like things weren't going his way anymore. When he rescued the uh, Fiona from the tower, so he felt like he learned that it wasn't him that he, but it wasn't him that Fiona that he rescued Fiona from the tower. It was Fiona that rescued him from that tower that day, because he made him. She made him feel like he was him. I love that perspective. That's awesome. Um, so. So what you have? You said you have dated before. Yeah. What has been like your longest relationship? I think my it was a kind of complicated relationship. Okay. It was. In what sense? I say long distance, I guess. So okay. I thought I liked this person. I thought they liked me, I guess, but it was kind of hard. Well, because like those of this long distance stuff, because I know like we know each other for a long time. We talked a lot. But I felt like it was time to move on. But I still care about that person. That person still cares about me. But oh, okay. it was hard. But I felt like we should stay as friends. And it's hard. Where, did they, where do they live? They live in another, another state or in Virginia, but like in another town? Like in another town. So, yeah. But they also helped me a lot. I also helped them a lot, too. And... Okay. It was just like that. But I think being in a new relationship will make me feel better. In a new relationship. Yeah. So the the um what I was gonna say is that, you know, loving yourself, because I, I can tell that you like really care about yourself. So loving yourself is like the first step to like finding somebody that's gonna appreciate you for you. And I feel like all the work that you do does show that you care about yourself and you love yourself very much. So definitely showing that to the world and, and being proud of who you are, which you are, which I love, it is going to help you attract the right type of person to your life. Yes.
Most definitely. What do you think about that? Most definitely. Good. So, um, da, 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 da. okay. So, what, what do you have any plans in the next like five years that you want to accomplish? Anything that you want to accomplish? So, going like forward? from now, I'm planning to move out of state. And uh, I don't want to say it out loud. I don't want to jinx myself or anything. Wait, don't, no, no, no. Don't say what state. But, like, you, you're you planning on moving out of state? Yeah. Okay. And plan to start my career as well with uh, singing and music and film acting. And that's what I want to do. And also do voice some characters, too. So voice some cartoon characters. I've been told I have a, a voice to voice the characters as well. Until I have a radio. You have a great voice. Speaking you do voice. have a radio voice. And that's what I wanted to do because I always want to voice like one of my favorite characters, like Saw the Hedgehog, Scooby Doo, Bugs Bunny. So those are the characters I really wanted to play so much because those are my favorite characters. Oh, and Optimus Prime too. That's also one of my favorites. Wait, can you do can you do um different uh voices? Like, can you change your voice to sound like those characters? Hmm. Let's see. If I did like Scooby Doo, he'll be like. Oh, Roy, Ruby Rex. <laughs> and what's up, Doc? That's good. <laughs> Autobots, transform and roll out. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're so good. I Oh, my God, definitely. So if anybody is a voice coach and is listening to this podcast, please hit up my boy, Guy Isaiah, so that you can hook him up with some voice acting lessons. Okay, so guy, what what kind of things? So besides working out and like driving around, what other things do you do to self care to like take care of yourself to make you feel good? Uh, I like to listen to music. I like to walk outside when I do TikToks outside and dance because that makes me feel good. And what I do is like I cook. Sometimes I like to make my own smoothies. That's self care because I like to make my own smoothies because I'm a smoothie pro. <laughs> yeah. So what other things do you like to cook? So besides making smoothies, is there anything that you're like really good at cooking that you enjoy making for yourself? Uh, I like to cook my own little chicken sandwiches. I like to make my own pizza. I like to make a little healthy okay. pizza with uh, spinach and tomato. Okay, that sounds good. What about um? Do you like and you go for walks and stuff like that too? Yes, I do. Nice. Okay, I'm glad. So, what about your parents? Are like so? Are you are you living with your parents right now for for the time being until you move? Uh, for now, yes, until I move. And how? Wait, how do they give you your space and like kind of let you do your own thing, even though you're living with them? Oh uh, yes. Do they, do they respect? Yes, them? they respect that. They respect my space and stuff. And yes, so I'm glad to have parents like that who accept me, and I'm glad they see me for me. They sound like amazing people, honestly. I, I'm glad you have such supportive parents. Yeah. And that your family is so awesome with you as well. So, uh, right now, are you, are you working um, oh, yeah. somewhere right now? Oh, yeah. So, I'm working at a retail for now. And I've been uh, okay. working full time. So, but I felt like it was time for me to move on right now to start my dream and career. Because I actually know what I want to do. And it's time for me to... Go over my career. No more waiting too long. It's just time to get out there and just do my thing. And also continue being an advocate for autism. But I just, what I really want is to be a big advocate for autism. A real big advocate for autism. And share my stories to a whole lot of people. At many schools, many churches, any city conferences. That's what I want to do. That's what I want. To share my story to a whole lot of people whole around the world. And that's why I want to help bring hope for people who are just like me. Help bring hope for people who are parents of that child with autism and friends and help those people. It's those I want to care about. Because here's the thing. I like superheroes. Even though I don't really read comic books, but I do like comic book heroes, and I do like see superheroes on movies and TV shows, like Spider-Man, Batman, Iron Man, 
uh, Power Rangers and Teen Titans and Ben 10. You're definitely going to be like a superhero to um, other people that are on the spectrum and also parents of children that are on the spectrum or family members for that matter. Um, have you ever thought about doing mentoring for young men or, or anybody with autism rather? I thought I never thought about that. Actually, I think that'll be a good thing too to be a mentor. And I have mentored someone before. So she was a very sweet person. A very, very sweet mm -hmm. person. She had a good heart and she was like super smart and very creative and super talented and lots of joy. That sounds good. I'm gonna connect you with an organization. Um so the the name of the organization is The Color of Autism. And they have this uh, program where they connect mentors with people that need mentoring. So I'm gonna put your, I'm gonna send them your information so that they can reach out to you because they're really amazing and they're trying to change the the what people see as autistic in the media because a lot of the time it's like white little white boys, but they don't really show people of color with autism and then having you and you're so amazing, I think that would just be even better for them. And yeah. And also for me, I forgot to mention, like sometimes the past can hurt. And sometimes it was hard for me to let go of the past. But there's one thing I learned. Things that happened in the past happen for a reason. Cause that's an origin story. You use that past as a story to help inspire people, to help change people, to help open their hearts, to help them become better people. And that's what I believe, to bring hope and make a change and make a difference. Because supporting people with autism will make you a better person. I love that, Isaiah. I mean, guys. Yeah. So, um, so I want to... Uh, I want to ask you one last question, and that's going to be, what are some tips that you would give to the parents of children who are neurodiverse or that, or children that are on the spectrum? Like, what would you, what would you tell their parents? Like, what would you wish that your parents knew when you were growing up? Like, what would you tell these parents so that they can help their kids in the future? I would say, don't see them as their label. See them as people. Be there for them. Talk to the schools, talk to the educators, talk to anyone who has no may not may and may not know about autism very well. And other kids with children, kids, parents, to have them more aware of that. And don't treat the kids like a label. Treat them as people first. And also don't underestimate your child. Don't give up on your child. That you need to believe in them and care for them and help them reach their full potential. And there was an episode where I referenced, because that was a little bit of a line from a episode on the Proud Family Loud and the Proud, they have an autistic character with a Kessel Kess, Hot Ross and Pete playing the doctor. Doctor, yeah. I forgot the name. So I think it was Dr. Loud. I think that was the name. But when I watched that episode, that was a very, very, very beautiful episode. So I did reaction video about episode reaction video on my on that episode on my TikTok page, and it meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to me. And if you have not had seen that episode yet, please check it out. Please check that episode out because it touched a lot of people's hearts. And that's where I want to go right there. So accept your child for who they are. And uh, Psalm from Lloyd, true. This is me. So please accept for who I am, and please accept for what I do. I'm just doing everything I can, and all I want to be is true. And Lizzo, in case I made no way to you today, you're special. And here's a little quote I like to use, my personal quote. When times are hard, you must never give up. Thank you, guy. That was so awesome. So... Tell me, tell the audience members, the comadres, where they can find you 
in your socials? Like, what are your social media handles? And like, give us your TikTok and Instagram and all of that. So, so where can we find you? My TikTok is the Black Puzzle, and the reason why I call myself that because the part the Black Puzzle means like I was inspired by Black heroes and Black idols as well. The puzzle represents connection to help connect people with autism and other people who may not understand it bring connection that's what i use that for so on tiktok the black puzzle and people can also find me on instagram the official black puzzle awesome and i'm gonna end the episode how i always end it which is follow me at comadre and the pod and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to send me a comadregram via email at marcyacomadrandopod.com or slide up into my DMs. Please visit our website, www.comadrandopod.com to read our latest blog post, find out about future events, and get your official comadre merch. Thank you for spending time with your compadres, Guy. Guess what? Thank you. You're officially a compadre of the show. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm. Bye. See you later.